was your Democratic floor leader in the state house, the number two Democrat in our caucus, the highest ranking African American elected office at the state level. I stepped down from that position to run for Congress in the 14th Congressional District, and in less than 72 hours ago, I received the endorsement of the mighty UAW.
and to be a part of a leadership team that was able to stand up and get important legislation passed, like the Medicaid expansion, which brought health care to half a million people here in the state of Michigan, and increasing our minimum wage to make sure that people are not just making a minimum wage, but they're making a living wage, so they won't have to work two or three jobs just to make ends meet. These are the things my Democratic colleagues and I stood for and will continue to stand for because our hard work is far from over. At the end of the day, what I thought was most important that we have legislators in Lansing that was hungry to be in leadership, hungry to own the agenda, hungry for a majority. You know, if we really want to enact change, if we really want to move the needle, we have to get the numbers back on our side. You know, so I spent two years, my first two years in the State House, helping recruit candidates that were not afraid to put up a vote for women, that were not afraid to put up a vote for labor, that was not afraid to put up a vote for the middle class. And I spent the year 2011 and 2012 raising over $100,000 for our Democratic candidates, knocking doors to help them get elected. I was tired of getting rolled over and rolled on in Lansing. You know, in 2010, we didn't even have enough members to even be relevant in the process. You know, so what, I, what did I do? I rolled up my sleeves and I went to work. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that the quality that we need the most in our elected officials, they need to be fearless. Because when it comes down to it, we need people that's going to stand up for what's right. We're going to need people that's going to speak out against wrong. And we need, if it comes down to it, we need folks that's going to show up if that situation requires it. You know, one of the moments that I was most proud of our Democratic caucus was just before the Republicans was about to push the right to work legislation. It was starting to become real. And the Republicans started to shut down the Capitol by piling all their staffers into the Capitol so that you and you and you, you couldn't come in and witness what was about to happen in the people's capital. And then they locked labor out of the capital. Y'all remember that. They locked us, they locked everyone out of the capital. If you were, if you were not a Republican staffer, you was outside. But one of my proudest moments, I remember being in the caucus room with Representative Bryant, we were chatting, just the two of us, about what we we're gonna do about it. Because we've been talking about a lot of stuff as a caucus at that time. We always talked about standing up and walking off the, you know, off the floor of the house. But this time, Representative Brown and I put every single Democrat into our caucus room. And we told them, now is the time. We, we marched every single Democrat off the floor of the house, out of the Capitol, and onto the front lawn with all of you, to stand with all of you. That's the fearless thing we talked about. about that every person need to have access to the Capitol. I don't care what kind of legislation that you were pushing. So when people want to know what kind of legislator I'm going to be in D.C., I'm hungry. I'm hungry for leadership. You're not going to find somebody that's going to work harder than me, work smarter than me. And when the time comes, I'm fearless. I'm ready to run through every brick wall. And I want to be there right with you, running through all those brick walls it's going to take for us to move the needle in D.C. So when it comes to standing up for a fair trade agreement, you know where I'm at, Region 1. No doubt about it. I'm with you. You got super jobs on the team. I'm going to D.C. to make it happen, to get a jobs plan, put people back to work, because when people are working, they're buying houses, they're buying cars, they're spending money. And then when our economy does better, we all do better. And one of the ways that we put people back to work is by investing in our infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our mass transportation. These are the type of projects that are going to unlock our economic potential for this region, bringing money back to this region, putting people back to work, and expanding our economy. These are the type of issues that I will champion issues that grow the middle class. And while we all know that policy is absolutely important, the end game for D.C. 
is to have more Democrats than Republicans. I'm gonna say that again because y'all didn't hear me. The end game in DC is to have more Democrats than Republicans. Because if we're gonna move the needle for the middle class families, if we're gonna move the needle for women, if we're gonna move the needle for seniors, our communities, our babies, we must control the agenda and no one else. It has to be our agenda to control. And the only way that happens is that we have more Democrats, that we take the House back. The days of Democrats getting rolled over and rolled on, they got to come to an end now. And the people in this room, and the people in this room, and the people sitting on this stage, that's our job to make it happen. Look, I can stand before each and every one of you today, I can tell you that I'm committed. You know, it's in my roots, it's in my blood. You know, my grandfather was the vice president of the Black Bricklayers Union in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. We all know what was happening in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. And back in the day, there was a Black Bricklayers Union and there was a White Bricklayers Union. And my grandfather's organization was one of the very first organizations to come out and embrace the Montgomery bus boycott. You know, as a matter of fact, you know, Martin Luther King had an office right downstairs on the first floor of my grandfather's building. You know, my grandfather was one of the only people, one of the only African Americans uh, in Montgomery to have a car in 1955. So he spent his days going around picking people up from bus stops, taking, taking kids to school, appointments, grocery stores. You know, and at that time, my grandfather didn't know, but he was setting a mandate for our family. A mandate of service. You know, how do you give back to your community? How do you make it a better place? How do you stand up against injustice? You know, in my role, my role wasn't personally easy. By the time I graduated from college, my wife and I, we were full-time students at Michigan State. I was holding down two part-time jobs, and we had two kids while we were in college. You know, it was hard. Every day I wanted to quit, but that would have been an easy thing to do. But I stayed the course, and I was committed and I remain committed today to making our community a better place. But still I wonder though, when did it become so offensive to expect an honest day's wage for an honest day's work? When did it become so terrible to want your children to go to college and to be actually, to actually be able to pay for it? When did it become so deplorable for a woman to be able to make her own decisions about her own body? Brothers and sisters, we have a lot of work to do is what I'm telling you. This year, 2014, we can't have over 900,000 Democrats sit the sideline. Politics is not a spectator sport. And let's remember, there was a day that you could graduate from high school or college, get a job, provide for a family. There was a day when if you were a member of the UAW, you had a summer car and you had a winter car. There was a day when you were able to own a home, buy a summer home if you like, and send your kid to college, but not today. Now when Republicans in control of the agenda, they're destroying the middle class, my brothers and sisters, and they're taking everything away from us that we worked so hard to achieve. This must be the year, 2014 must be the year that we stand up. Simply put, we have to show up and we have to vote. We have to send Republicans packing, and we got to take a stand. So when it comes to Mark Schauer, when it comes to Gary Peters, it's an absolute must that we get them elected. Yeah. When it comes to our state house, it's time for us to flip it. We need to make a minority leader, Tim Brown, he needs to be Speaker of the House, and he only does, he only does that. I'm a nuts and bolts campaign guy. 
I believe that you win campaigns one vote at a time by touching them and talking to them. So I need you to reach out to your neighbors. I need you to engage your family members and let them know that we need to elect good people. I like to have yard signs all over the place. I want a yard sign in your yard. I want your neighbors to know who you standing up for, who you supporting, because they look to all of us. When they go to vote, they know that you you wake up. They know you're on the right side of history. They know you back the right candidates. I want my yard sign in your yard. I want you talking to your neighbors on my behalf. Because the UAW, UAW endorsement has to be more than just a paper endorsement. We got to go out and we got to make it happen. So, August 5th, folks. August 5th. That's the primary day. Who we voting for? Oh, man, y'all smart as I don't know what, but there ain't no energy in that though. Come on. I just had to bring all this energy to tell you what I'm going to do. I need this energy back. So, August 5th, who we voting for? Yeah.